Hello and welcome to Rallycross GT and to another photo mode tutorial. In our first tutorial we've covered scapes modes in Gran Turismo and the basics of photography. But this time this tutorial is made especially for you sim racer who likes to take photos of your races and put them on social media. So we will be covering race replay photography. We all want to take good photos but good and bad is relative. For example, I might find one photo beautiful and you might go like eh. However, there is science behind good photography and that has a lot to do with the composition, framing and the colors. Also for racing photography or for dynamic photos in scapes mode, it's good to have a narrative or a story. So your framing and your composition should take that into consideration as well. As a race photographer, your job is to make the moment look more exciting than it actually was. You have to use the camera angles, the framing, to make the moment look more dramatic and more exciting, even if the real moment was not really like that. Whoever is looking at your photos doesn't need to know that the real moment was not exciting. They just want to be amazed by your shots. So the type of photos that I like to take are like as if I was trackside watching the race with a camera in my hand. In Gran Turismo, most of the preset camera angles already give you this feeling, but you can also use the free cam to get the exact angle that you want for that dramatic shot. You can also use the free camera to move around the car like a drone. I'm not a big fan of these type of photos, but there are times where they work. Before we dive straight into practice, I would like to show you some photos that I've taken in the past. I will be mentioning which car I'm driving in each photo, just so you know that you don't always have to be the center of attention to make a good photo. There are times where you can have another driver as a focus and still make a good photo and that also gives you more material for social media where you can post and tag them and they can always repost your photos. Here we have an action shot with a Lancia Stratus on two wheels. What happened here is that I clipped the inside of the curb and the car flipped a little bit. It's not a high jump, but the way I took the shot, it makes it look a bit more extreme than it actually was. In the framing, I put the car on the left hand side of the picture and left space on the right. This, this gives a sensation of movement and direction that the car is traveling in. Now here we have a group shot. I'm driving the yellow Abarth in the middle and you can see that there is very little empty space in this photo. The idea is to make you look busy and claustrophobic with a lot of cars side by side. I cut the DeLorean on the left in half on purpose and the idea is to make the photo look so busy and so much going on that you can't even fit everything in the frame. The cars on the back are quite far from, from the action, but the trick here, I put the camera far away from the Abarth and then zoomed in, so then the cars at the back, they appear closer to me in the action. Now in this one, I'm driving the Yaris that is in the center, but the focus here is on the Peugeot in the front. This photo was taken on a high speed corner and the idea was to align the three cars for the shot. So you can see the three cars, they are lined up in the main diagonal, which is top left to bottom right. And the, all the cars, they are facing the secondary diagonal, which is top right to bottom left. It's a balanced composition and I use the shutter speed and the aperture to give just enough motion blur to the photo. So we've talked enough about theory, let's go and see how we do this in practice. I've got this race replay where we can apply the points we talked about earlier. 
I picked this one in particular because I have already watched it and identified some interesting moments we can practice our framing, composition and camera positioning on the track. So here's the first shot I want to work with. I'm driving the blue Corvette, we are in the right hand corner and there are a few cars around. So I'm going through the preset cameras and I'm looking for an angle as if I'm on the side of the track with my camera in my hand. I'm not massively happy with these angles here, so we're gonna let the replay roll again for another half a second or so. Right, so going through the camera angles again, still nothing really that shows my Corvette in a good angle with the preset cameras, but we can still use this moment here for our exercise. We're just gonna look at a different car. We're gonna pick this white Shelby here since it's the closest one to the camera. The first thing we do is work on our framing. The framing will depend on what narrative you want to tell with your photo. We can do a close-up like this and only show the Shelby and leave a little bit of space on the right. You can still see the car behind. It's not a bad shot. Or we can zoom out a bit, include the Tesla as well. It's the same moment in the race, but now it looks like there's a chase or battle going on. Also, in this framing, we can see a little bit of the curb on the bottom right of the frame, which shows that you're going through a sequence of corners. Now, let's try this. We're going to keep the cars in the same place. We're going to try to find another angle to show the Corvette, the blue Corvette I'm driving. The preset cameras, unfortunately, are not helping our cause, so we're going to have to use the free camera and find a track side angle that works for this. But one very important detail about the free camera is where to place it. I see a lot of people do this and they put the camera right next to the car. What happens when you do that is that you end up distorting the car and make it look stretched. And then to make it even worse, people put the camera close to the car and then zoom out in an attempt to show more of the scene. It does not look good. Just don't do that. So, positioning the free camera. The trick is to make the scene look dynamic. Here, it's close to the car, but we still have some space on the right. But there's no action going on here. The yellow car is too far back, and there's a blue car in front, but it's not even in the frame. How can we make this look more exciting? We go trackside. So I'm just gonna walk backwards from where we put the camera close to the car, keep the cars in the same position and frame again. And you can see that this immediately looks a lot better. It looks like the cars are much closer to each other and this is because we positioned the camera far from the cars and then we zoomed in. So next time you are taking uh, race photos, try this trick, try to make the cars look closer and let me know in the comments how it went. So I like to use the preset cameras as much as possible, but when they don't give me the exact angle that I want, I'll use a free camera, but I will use those preset cameras as a reference point. In saying that, Let's try that first framing of the white Shelby again with the free camera and see what it looks like. So we're gonna come down the track a little bit and see if we can find a good angle for this shot. So we set the camera, zoom into frame, and then you can do some minor adjustments for the camera position, holding the R2 button and then using the stick, just so you can get the exact framing without having to get out of the camera, move again, and then get back in. 
And here we go, uh, very similar framing, very similar shot to what we did uh, early on using the preset cameras, but this time using the free camera. We use the preset as a reference and we use the free camera to get the exact shot that we want. One more important tip is how you should use the aperture. If you drag the bar here all to the left, all the elements far from the focus, they become blurry. And if you drag everything to the right, all the elements in the, in the frame will become sharper and more visible. The default setting in Gran Turismo is 16.0 and that should do for most of the cases. So that's it for the first part of the tutorial. We've covered preset cameras, we've covered moving camera and framing. So we're gonna let the replay run a little bit more because I want to show you something else. So we're looking at these two guys here now, the Dodge Challenger and the Camaro. They're coming down the main straight and that's where we want to photograph them. Right, so this is the point I want to photograph. Let's see what we can do with the preset cameras. So none of the preset positions give me the effect that I'm looking for. I want to show a good side-by-side -side battle. So we're gonna have to use the free camera for this. So we're just gonna go for a walk here outside the track to the side. And there you go. We have a nice framing here showing the cars side by side. So we're happy with the camera position. Let's work on the framing. We don't want the cars right in the center. We want them a little bit on the left. So we have space on the right that will give a sense of speed and movement. Like this. I'm gonna set the focus here on the Camaro, the blue one. And for the aperture, just checking here both sides to see what we get. But we want somewhere in the middle where the background is slightly blurry, but the cars are still well visible. You can always use the preview just to see what it looks like in full screen. And this being a speed shot, we need to work with the shutter speed. So the lowest you can go in replace is uh, 160. That's the lowest you can go. Let's just take one shot like this and see what happens. The slower the shutter speed, the more blur you're gonna have. So you can see the background is completely blurry, the foreground, the little grass, you can't see anything, but the cars are still okay. Let's try now the other extreme. We're gonna set the shutter speed to 1 8000. Now there's absolutely no blur. This is as crisp as you can get. But there's no sense of speed, which is what we're looking for. So I know from experience that 125 or 250 will be good speed for most of your moving shots. I'm going with 250 here. You can see there's just enough blur in the background. You can see the wheels are spinning and there's still a little bit of blur in the grass in the foreground as well near the camera. There is one more feature here that is very important but many people don't even know it exists, which is the panning mode. This affects how the camera tracks the car during the shot. There are three different panning modes. Each of them will move the camera in a slightly different way. By default, the game comes in the panning mode too. So let's just play around a little bit and see the difference between 
the three modes and what they do. Panning mode one, it's fixed camera. The camera is on a tripod or handheld by someone on the side of the track and it's tracking the car as it passes by. This is probably the closest you get to a real life situation where you're photographing a race car. So you can see now that the cars are still visible but the background is completely blurry. This works if that's what you're looking for but that's not what I want here right now. Panning mode 2, which is the default, is moving camera. So the camera does not track sideways, but it follows the cars in a straight line. It moves as if it was on rails or something. So that's the shot we took before. The background is a lot more visible now, but you still have a little bit of blur in the front and the cars are well crisp. Same camera settings, just different panning. You can clearly see the difference here. Pa uh, panning mode 3 is moving and rotating camera. So it's a combination of both modes 1 and 2. So here the camera is moving sideways on a rail, but it's also tracking the car as they pass by. Depending on the distance between the camera and the car, you will notice very little difference between the modes 2 and 3. And as you can see here in this example, there is very little difference. I'm not gonna work more with this one, but maybe give it a try and uh, let us know in the comments uh, what you think of the difference. So now we have the three photos side by side with the three different panning modes. Let me know in the comments which one is your favorite or which one you like the most. And also if you knew that this feature existed. So now we've talked about camera positioning, framing, tracking. All of this should help you take better photos for social media. But before we finish this tutorial, I want to show how you can use some effects and filters to make the photo look even better. We have quite a sunny day here in Willow Springs. There is a lot of reflection already in the cars, but I want a little bit more. Glare affects how much those reflections will shine. The more glare you put, the more they will glow. Let's do a quick preview. Just a quick point that we talked about in our first tutorial. Any changes you make here above the filters in screen effects or white balance, it affects the whole photo. So just be careful with that. Next, I'm adding a background mask so I can treat the background separately to the car. I'm gonna start by adding more contrast to make the tarmac and the shadows a little bit darker. And then remove a little bit of saturation because I don't want the green wall at the back competing with the cars. The idea is to make the cars stand out as much as possible. I'm gonna do some quick adjustments to the blacks as well. Not too much because I have already added enough contrast, but you can see the shadows of the cars have become a little bit crispier. Quick preview again. So that's good, I'm gonna work on the cars now. I always start looking at the contrast, trying to make the lines of the car, the shadows, a little bit more defined. Putting a little bit of blacks as well, not too much because we already put enough contrast, but just enough to enhance it a little bit more. So there you go, some cool adjustments to this shot. The car is jumping out quite a bit with the strong colors, the road dark as well. But let's go crazier. Let's add another mask and see what we can do with this. How can we make this shot even more dramatic? So I got this one here that works on the top and bottom, leaves the center clean as is. And I'm gonna cycle through the filters and see if we can find something interesting. This one, monochrome effect, I think it's a good one. We can change the intensity if we want. 
but I think maximum looks good. And there you go, our final photo for today. Big uh, good and evil vibes. It looks like one of those movie posters, blue versus orange. But there you go, that's what you can do with uh, photo adjustments, with masks and with the filters as well on top of the framing. So key takeaways for today, camera positioning, how close you should put the camera to the car, how to use the zoom to make the cars look closer or further from each other, how to use the preset cameras or the free camera, how to do your framing to make the photo more dynamic, to give a sense of movement. We looked at tracking as well, because that's quite important depending on your scene. And last but not least, some special effects. I hope you have enjoyed this tutorial. Please let me know in the comments if the tips were useful and also if you would have done something different with these shots here. And I would love to see your photos on Instagram. Please do tag me at rallycrossgt so I can see the photos you've taken using these tips here. Thanks a lot for watching and see you next time.